Well, having pleaded to God for these things, have mercy on me according to your steadfast love. Your abundant mercy cleanse me. After pleading to God for these things, David makes a promise. And this is my favorite part. Verses 13 through 15. Look at what he says. He says, do all this stuff for me, God. I mean, cleanse me, forgive me, according to your mercy and your love. Blot out my transgressions, wipe my slate clean, remove my guilt. And then he says in verse 13, and this is what I'll do. Then, once you do that, God, then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation. And then my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Well, what's going on there? He promises God that he will steward his failures in service to God and in service to others. We don't typically think of our failures as something to steward. We think of them as things to move past and things to cover up. But we don't think of them in terms of failure when we realize it is a gift that we can give to other people. What we learn from it is a gift that we can give to other people. He promises God that he will steward his failures in service to God and others. He promises God that he will tell the world, anybody who will listen, about the seriousness of sin and the, the greatness of grace. He promises God that he will spend the rest of his life telling everyone of God's love and God's mercy and God's righteousness. Do all the work that only you can do inside me, God, and then set me up and let me loose. I will tell my story. I, will, I remember where I was sitting and what time of day it was. Stacy and I were newly married. We were living in Texas. I didn't have anything to do all day long. She would get up and go to work. It was my year of just recovery, really. It was God taking me to the wilderness and deconstructing me. And I remember being a 43-year-old man and thinking to myself, what, I'm in a far-off land, away from everything and everyone familiar. I have more time alone now than I've ever had in my entire life. God, what are you doing with me? What do you want to do with me? I was scared, I was frustrated, I was angry, I was sad. I was all of that stuff. And I remember just begging God to show me something. What, what am I going to do? What's the rest of my life going to look like? I was thinking a year ago I knew exactly which trajectory I was on and where my life was headed and now I don't. I'm sinking, I'm drowning. And I don't hear God speak audibly. If I did, it would probably scare me to death, okay? It's, it's, I'm assuming that God's voice sounds very much like Stacy's. However, <laughs> I don't actually hear him talk, okay? But I had this impression that was so real and so tangible that I knew I could bank on it, that it was from God. And it was basically God saying, you tell the truth about yourself and let me do the rest. Well, what does that look like, God? Don't worry about it. I'll show you what that looks like when the time is right. But if you want some glimpse into what I'm calling you to do, summoning you to do, here it is. You tell the truth about yourself and you don't worry what other people think. You take whatever remnants of a mask you have left on your face, you take it off, you burn it up. You tell the truth. Just tell the truth. Because my grace shines brightest in the darkness. So, it's okay. Tell your story. Don't be edited. Don't Photoshop your narrative. Just tell the truth. Well, this is what David has promised to do. 
I, I am going to steward my failures. I am going to tell anybody who will listen about the seriousness of sin and the greatness of grace. I am going to spend the rest of my life telling everybody about your love and your mercy, which was proven to me when I was at my worst. This forgiven sinner now becomes the instructor of sin and forgiveness. This absolved adulterer now becomes the premier preacher of our unfaithfulness and God's fidelity, God's faithfulness. This pardoned life taker, this pardoned murderer is now singing about a God who gives new life to those who deserve death. David won't shut up. David can't shut up and God doesn't want him to. 